good day. Welcome back to the Constitution line by line. I'm Paul Fabrizio. And I'm Don Frazier, and I'm looking forward to new ground. (laughs) (laughs) We've gotten through Section 8. We did. Now we're heading into Section 9. Are you ready for this? Article 1, Section 9, Clause 1. Here we go. The migration or importation of such persons as any of the states now existing think proper to admit, shall not be prohibited by the Congress prior to the year 1808. But a tax or duty may be imposed on such importation, not exceeding $10 for each person. We're talking slaves here. Yeah, I was about to say, very euphemistically talking about slaves. Why didn't they use the word slaves? Imagine they were uncomfortable with it, if I had to guess. Yeah, I mean, that's what I would guess, too. We know it was a fight in the con- uh, in the Congress when, yeah. they were, when they were writing this. Well, They're- I mean, you're talking about a document that is bringing in enlighten- Enlightenment political theory. And the idea of born free yes. is a pretty big part of that. So in order, if you put slavery in there a bunch, it's calling into question the whole system. Yeah. And the fact that the Congress can raise 10 bucks a head off the importation of slaves, that's a new one to me. I didn't know that you could actually see a revenue stream from the transatlantic slave trade built into the constitution think i mean think about this they have all these fine egalitarian humanist impulses yeah and then they have slavery and 10 bucks a head going to the federal government we're gonna make money off it yeah and now you know what happens when they limit the slave trade when they say oh you can't do that yeah i mean by the way we need to explain it what they said is that you can have the slave trade for another 20 years yeah and then in 1808 it ends it becomes unconstitutional correct so this is a sunset clause yeah and um by the way think about that for a second it's okay now but it won't be later yeah we know we know what we're doing is wrong but we we, we can't get we there yet. We just can't get there yet. We know smoking's bad for us. We just can't quit it yet. Right. Slavery is horrible, but, but, but we're going to make money off it. We're and gonna, you can do it for On the importation years. part. Yeah, they're not making a lot of money off of the internal slave trade, which we'll talk about later, which is a thing. Yeah. But this is fresh off the boat, slaves. Yeah. So, what happens with the slave trade when this? is in there is there is a massive spike in the importation of slaves slaves. absolutely because everybody wanted everybody knows there's a timer on it and they wanted to make their money while they could and this coincides with technological advances in agriculture which increases the demand for slaves and so it's the perfect storm oh my so people are saying hey you better get it while the getting's good and this guy, Eli Whitney's invented the cotton gin, and now we can actually refine as much cotton as we can grow. Well, you don't have to be a rocket genius <laughs> to figure out, I'm going to go over to Africa and buy low and come to the U.S. and sell high because we know that these commodities in people yeah. are going to have an appreciating value because there is a end date. So, I mean, Congress has set up an economic inflationary cycle with the trade of human beings. Yeah, that's what we're looking at here. And they're making money off it. They're scared. And they're making money off it. You know, (laughs) so many things you want to say, so many ways you want to slap those people in the face. Well, and think about the modern implications, because all of a sudden things like the idea behind reparations, yeah, which is a current political football. Right, as we get geared toward the 2020 elections. Absolutely. That's going to come up over and over again. Well, it's built in. Yeah. Ten bucks a head. Yeah. Oh, man. So, I'm, you know, maybe we should base reparations only on people 
who can trace their lineage to people that were imported after the passage of the Constitution and pay them $10 a head in uh, <laughs> adjusted for inflation, you know. The inflation. But then what do you do yeah, with the basis of their productivity? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a mess. There's so many things. Um did the importation of slaves increase every year as you got closer to 1808? Absolutely. And you can just watch those numbers climb and then... Was there any illegal importation of slaves after 1808? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's smugglers everywhere. And a bunch of what's going on is they essentially do a money laundering scheme by importing these people into the Spanish islands seasoning them in places like Cuba, mm-hmm. Puerto Rico, Dominic, or, or uh, Hispaniola, mm-hmm. um, and then repackaging these people that are essentially straight out of West Africa mm-hmm. on a new boat, new papers. But see, now it's not the international slave trade. Right. It's not, These are not no longer fresh off the boat. This is just an internal slave importation between Spanish America and in the United States. And so there's that that goes on. The Amistad case is an example of that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, but there's others that just flat smuggle them in to places like Barataria in South Louisiana. I've mentioned them before. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jim Bowie, mm-hmm. who's famous in Texas history, had a hand in some of this slave smuggling. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, it still goes on. Now it goes, it plummets mm-hmm. to a just a minor fraction Mm-hmm. of its pre-1808 levels in right. terms of importation. But uh, there are people who very, I mean, there were enslaved people that were very proud to claim their descent from a fresh from Africa mm-hmm. slave as late as the American Civil War, which is 61. Right. So, you know. Right. Wow. This is a sobering part of the That's Constitution. That's a sobering and kind of a gritty part. Yeah, and you think about the political calculus that it took to put this in the Constitution. What did the slave-owning states want? Yeah. What did the abolitionist states want? Or what were they willing to yield? And in the end, we know what they're willing to yield when we come up with this. Yeah. But think of how heated those discussions must have been. Well, and I can see a representative from, say, a New England state saying, fine, fine. We're going to keep this trade going, but we're going to tax it. Mm-hmm. And the South saying, okay. Yeah. Tax away. We'll pass it on to the consumer. Yeah, exactly. And we, we like all know. Be, yeah. And, and we all know that they're going to increase in value because they're going to be a more precious commodity. Simply by virtue of the, the words the in sun the setting, Constitution. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, tax away, man. Why stop at $10? So. Wow. But $10 was pretty hefty tax back then. Yeah. Still. They couldn't, they didn't have the votes to get rid of slavery at all. They didn't have the votes even to end the slave trade immediately. Correct. But they did have the votes to make money off of it yeah. as Congress. As Congress. Anything else in that clause? There's some other, there's some interesting wording at the beginning of it. Go back and read that first line. The migration or importation of such persons. All right, the migration or importation. So this is also talking about people coming from overseas as free persons. Okay, I I, I don't know about that, so we'll go with your interpretation. Well, I'm just asking. I, I don't know. As any of the states now existing think proper to admit. Okay. So, so if you got a bunch of Welsh coal miners that want to move to North Carolina, okay, admit away. Yeah. Shall not be prohibited by Congress prior to the year 1808. So in other words, if you want to import somebody. Yeah. Or you if can, you want to allow migration you, you from You want to encourage source. somebody. Yeah. So it could have been. Get those Canadians down here to Could have been New Canadians. York. Could have been Armenians. Yeah. I mean, whatever each state. Thought was okay. The Congress wasn't going to mess with it until 1808. That's right. After 1808, is that where we start to get immigration laws and that would quotas be, and things like that? That would be a possible guess to it. I don't know for sure. Yeah, maybe a because it, because you remember Article One, Section Eight, the previous section, yeah. had something about laws of naturalization. Correct. So, correct. So 
but I could see there being a reluctance to import a particular population on the part of the federal government that might be favored by a state. state. Could be Catholics, for mm-hmm. instance, or it could be Muslims. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or it could be yeah. you know Ashkenazi yeah. Jews. Yeah, you know, there's a whole host of things. It, it could be Indonesians. Yeah, uh, but because we're still a nation that is a patchwork quilt of immigrants from different regions, imagine they were probably a little reluctant to even speak to that. Yeah. So yeah. we're just going to throw it in there with the slavery issue too. Yeah. And just kind of wad it up and throw it in there. And of course, what that means is because there's that possibility. You don't have to use the word slaves in here. Correct. So everybody knows what we're talking about, but you don't say it. You don't have to say it because we could be talking about Armenians. That's right. And again, I I go back to what some call the great compromise of the Constitution. Sure. You know, there's a series of compromises in it between the northern states and the southern states, and this is clearly one of them. It just such an uncomfortable thing to confront yeah you know here it is 230 years later and it's just ooh. you read it and you're going this is icky yeah do i have to talk about this i mean because again you know we're holding up the framers yet they dealt with the reality that they had and that was the were, context of their times that was yeah and, slavery and existed. slavery is a big economic enterprise yeah a big economic yeah. enterprise and yeah. so tell me how come you can import furniture in New England and I can't import Port farm property, machinery. You know, slaves. Yeah. How sad. Agricultural commodities in the South, yeah. Okay. be nice if we didn't have that to deal with, but that's part of the American reality. It is. It is that we still are confronting, still dealing with today. Absolutely. Yeah. And it will go on well after we're dead. Yes. I hate to say it pessimistic being <laughs> i'm optimistic about some things and other things <laughs> that one is just not one of them yeah okay all right that's our line that is our line that, that was, was a right. mouthful let's go as back to article out. one section <laughs> eight right. it was more fun yeah it was more fun all right we'll uh, pick it up again next episode <laughs>